We have a question, uh, and I, I think it's a good one because I'm guessing it, it goes to the heart of what many of you are thinking and wondering in those, uh, the message we can take back to our communities. And I'll throw it out, I think all three of you certainly feel free to answer. How would you encourage second, and third, and fourth generation hyphenated, hyphenated Americans to learn about their cultural roots, particularly those without resources to travel? Uh, Matt, you want to start with that? Well, first it starts at home. You know, you got to know who you are. And you know, you know, so I'm going to get asked where you're from always. And you know, at home, we have, I have three daughters, and I try to teach them about Eritrea or uh, where their mom and dad were born. But obviously, since they were born here, you also want to assimilate them to this. And you have to be able to educate them a little bit, just say, hey, you are who you are, and don't forget your roots. If you can do that, if you can abroad, you know, you can go to services. I mean, I'm involved with the Eritrean church in San Diego whenever I'm a, I train at Altitude Mammoth Lakes, but whenever in San Diego, I'm involved with that. And in fact, they used to have gathering. And in fact, they gave me a pair of shoes when the first time, a kind of word of hope that we talked about or encouragement. And it says, wow, if these people believe in me, then I can I have, I have to work extra harder. And so you have to start with the community that are local without traveling. But eventually, hopefully, if you work hard and you said, your budget or your goal, it's always good to take people back to where their roots are and educate them. And you know what? This opportunity that you have here is priceless. And not everybody has it, so work harder and acknowledge that you, you, you can be successful, but it's also good to take a step back to say, you know what? I'm lucky to have this opportunity and I want to maximize my potential and your passion. If you could do that, and then you know, you'll be good. Uh, this event really celebrates uh, America's diversity, and uh, I guess there's not a real clear answer to, to that question, uh, but I guess by posing, um, posing that question, it already says that you're, you're curious about your heritage. Um, diaspora communities, it's, it's, it's really a quintessential uh, American resource because it provides an uh, interest point uh, you could be first generation, second generation, third generation, fifth, sixth, whatever, but to build that understanding of your roots and where your parents, or your grandparents, or your great great grandparents came from um, is, is your own story. Um, and I think one suggestion would be to get to know your story, um, ask questions. Uh, there, you have such access to the internet and, and friends or overseas, and I would encourage you to to know your story because it's something that will take you'll take with you for the rest of your life um yeah i would just you know I would definitely piggyback on that and you know in terms of saying you know stay connected and you know um even though you know life evolves it really starts at at the home home base and educating your children so when you know they get to a mature age you know they they do know that story they do have that written on their hearts so when you know they get to the age where they have kids, they'll be able to share the similar stories, you know, of you as a parent, what you went through, you know, in your homeland, or, you know, what your grandparents went through in your homeland, and even if those little bits, you know, of stories where they don't know actually know the location, know the landscape, or what it looked like, you know, that's where the internet comes in. That's where you know other resources can come in, where you can read and educate yourself on those, you know, different landscapes, on the different countries, the different cities as well as you know, painting that picture in your mind and you can learn more about your culture. Something that I've wondered about is, is covering international sports for, for quite a long time and is the, the message that goes out about the United States uh, when they see you uh, with your heritage, all three of you, but especially uh, Mab and Michelle, representing the United States with the flag going up at a world championships and Olympics, whatever, uh, you are an American, and, and Michelle, I know you, as I said, best of all, and, and there is, there's no one who's more proud of this country than Michelle Kwan, uh, except maybe the two gentlemen who are on either side of you. But, but I'm curious, all three of you, just as someone who's watched this scene, we've all watched this scene, right, play out, uh, the medal ceremony, and, and we're so proud of people from whatever country we're from. 
Um, so as a U.S. citizen myself, I'm very proud for, uh, for you. And James, I want to include you in this too, but even if the flag's not raising when you're getting your Super Bowl championship. But um, curious what message you think you send the world when uh, people from around the world look at America and see me, and of course, even more important, see you. And I hope that makes some sense, that question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Take it and run with it. Thank you. Well, the United States gave us an opportunity that is priceless for all of us. I might be, I'm one of 11 brothers and sisters. I might be notable because of my athletic accomplishment, but I have brothers that have gone to become engineering, doctors, lawyers, Stanford graduate and whatnot. Everybody has gone to do something great because of the opportunity that the United States provides. For me, Personally, to represent the United States is a dream come true. In 1998, when I finished with my competitive at UCLA, I decided, you know, I lived 10 years in Eritrea, 10 years in the United States, a year and a half in Italy. I had it was in a big decision, one of the biggest decisions I ever made. But, you know, some of my brothers say, go for Eritrea, some of my other siblings say, go for the United States. But I really thought about it and sat down. Most of my memories come from the United States. Since 12 years old, I've been here, and it was one of the difficult decisions that I made, but it's the best decision because the United States done so much things for me and for my siblings, and the least thing I could do is represent our country, and it gives me a great honor and privilege to live in the United States, but also put our flag on the podium because, you know, it, it, it's all about hard work. Nothing is handed to you, but you visualize those things that a flashback when you came as a kid and going to junior high and just with the language and culture. But the United States is about the melting pot mm -hmm. from different ethnicity, different religion, different everything that, hey, it is, it is what it is. And uh, it gave me a great honor for me to have this opportunity to showcase when you wear that USA jersey, you wear it with pride. And when you feel like giving up, you don't want to give up because you are representing the United States. But also you know that your roots are also representing you, whether it's from Eritrea or people from Italy cheering for me. Why? Because you want to be the best human being that you can. And hopefully and when the flag goes up, you feel very proud that you have accomplished your goal to the country that adapts you and gave you opportunity. And you know, that little hope, that seed there gave us a chance to be the best we can, and you could only do that in the United States. Yeah, parents would have been satisfied in Italy and others, but they wanted a better opportunity for their kids. Just anybody would, and we have to take that hard and maximize that potential, and hopefully we have delivered as, you know, and many others will deliver behind us, whether it's first generation, second generation, or others, because the United States is, has come from all diverse of, of ethnicity, and I hope I have done proud to represent our country to the best that I can, not only during the Olympics or New York City Marathon, but every day of my life. Meb mentioned uh, wearing the team uniform, wearing USA. Um, it, it gives me chills just thinking of it when I was a child and dreaming of one day owning the you know, world team, Team USA outfit or the Olympic gear um, and walking with your teammates. Um, the thing that I, I, I picture of the Olympics and walking behind the American flag uh, with my fellow teammates, I'm so proud to represent the United States, uh, to skate and try to to do your best and sort of when people say oh you have the weight of the country on your shoulders you do because you feel like you need to represent the best you can and you hope that you make your your family and your all americans proud and and one of the things that um i guess uh when i was skating it was it was one of those things that not only was it um a, a very humbling experience uh, but it was such a proud moment for my family uh, to know that they gave those opportunities to their children and, and now to step out of the world stage in front of millions of people and to represent the country and, and I could just sense that my parents were so proud as well. Um, I can actually put a little spin on it and look at it from different